Only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them is good. God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. He's just looking down on us, just saying, will anyone give their all to me? Will anyone just seek me still? Will anyone just throw themselves at my feet? You know, God told me two years ago when we started this whole prayer journey, he said, Bill, if you'll just abide in me, I'll give you the world. And he has spoken that so clearly over us. And it's not because give the world does not mean stuff. I could care less about that. It's about people being saved, lives being changed. But it always begins with a broken spirit before God saying, I can't do it without you. I, I can't accomplish the vision that God's put in my heart. I can't. It's too big. And I said, God, why would you do that? Why would you frustrate me by giving me a vision bigger than I can do? And then God began to speak to me and say, because I'm going to do it. Because you're going to sit still before me and see that the Lord is good. And he's going to do it. And he's just waiting on our number one strategy, which is to not have one. And to trust in him. And then he will do in an instant what it would take us a lifetime to do if we'll just simply be fully surrendered to him. Last night I preached a different message completely, literally, I mean, not even a single same point. God put in my heart last night to talk about the next generation because we're losing our kids. We're losing them. If you don't believe me, go to the mall, walk around. We're losing them. And I want my kids to think that what is happening right now is normal. I want my kids to grow up in the house of God, full of the power of God. But that's only possible if my kids' parents throw themselves at the feet of the Father. We cannot ask God to do in our kids what we're unwilling to let him do in us. So if not for any other reason than for the next generation, would you give your all to God? Because they need to see men and women who are just willing to be his people. That's what this is about. This is just a good, very unsubtle reminder that we're his. And that he's in charge still. And that we're to be fully yielded to him. Our student pastor, I talked to him this last week, and God's really working in him and in our students right now. And I don't know how it's all going to work. We're still, still trying to figure it all out, but I challenged him and I challenged our students last night that we're going to start a, a huge deal this summer where we just pour into our young people all summer long. And we just grow them up. And we take them and we work them and we get them out in the field doing ministry all summer. That's the plan. The only thing I promise them is they're not going to get paid. That's my promise. <laughs> We're going to work them hard and break them down and build them up in the Lord. And we need a lot of adults to help us do that. But you cannot lead where you're unwilling to go yourself. And so it's, it's either all in or don't be in at all. I need you to be all in here or find another church. Because we do not have time to play church. There are too many souls to be reached. I refuse to watch the next generation go to hell on my watch. So we've got to get serious about being a disciple. 
And that starts today. I just want to tell you now, I plan on screaming and yelling at you all summer long. Because I'm asking God to do something we've never seen before. But I don't need you to ask as a church. I need you to ask as an individual. Say, God, move in me. Do something new in me. If not for any other reason, so that my kids can see the glory of God. I just want to see Acts chapter 2 again. That's all I want. I did not move my family down to the city because I just really wanted to be a religious leader. I moved my family down here and took the crazy, stupid risk of starting something from nothing because I want to see a movement of God. And that's only possible if we fully completely drain ourselves of our own ambitions, of our own desires, and give ourselves fully to God. And on the other side of that is greatness. On the other side of getting over ourselves and our positions and our titles and whether people like us or not, on the other side of that is God's power. And so as we leave in just a few moments, my final challenge to you is don't you dare leave here holding anything back from God. If you do that, God can't move. But if you will fully give yourself to God, I mean everything, everything surrendered to Him, it is unbelievable what God will do. It'll blow your mind. You won't even believe the miracles that He'll release. Because what he's waiting on is the ultimate miracle. And that is for us to be willing to just completely submit ourselves to him. And if we'll do that, we will see lives change like never before. I'm in. Are you? That's what we want. That's the dream. As we dismiss, I want to challenge you. Be here next week. I'll be up <coughs> preaching on the what. Hopefully we'll be a little more together. I'll actually have eaten something. But my prayer is that God is turning in you. And I pray he does not let you off the hook until you give it up and lay everything down before him and trust him. It's going to cost you time, money, money, energy. It's going to cost you your reputation. It's going to cost what people think. It's going to cost everything. And when you think the cost is fully paid, it'll cost more than that. Because that's what it is to be a disciple. And let's be committed. And let's see God do some great things.